Former President Ferdinand E. Marcos Sr. signed Proclamation No. 1081 on September 21, 1972, placing the Republic of the Philippines under martial law. The proclamation marked the beginning of a 14-year period of authoritarian rule which would include eight years of martial law, followed by six more years where Marcos retained essentially all of his powers as dictator. Today, the 1987 Constitution of the Philippines safeguards our institutions from a repeat of Marcos' martial law regime. The Supreme Court is empowered to review all official acts to determine if there has been grave abuse of discretion. Congress cannot be padlocked. Martial law is limited in duration and effects, even if contemplated by a president. Group 2 of Constitutional Law 1 of Mindanao State University, Aristotle, will discuss Section 18 of Article 7 of the 1987 Constitution of the Philippines. Hi everyone, I'm Jaira. And I'm Siti. And we are going to discuss the calling out power of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. So partner, as point of information, the President shall be the Commander-in-Chief of all armed forces of the Philippines. And whenever it becomes necessary, it is important to note that he may call out all the armed forces to prevent or suppress lawless violence, invasion, or rebellion. As discussed in the case of San Lacaz versus Executive Secretary, the conditions of actual invasion or rebellion and when the public safety requires it does not need to concur before the president to exercise its calling out power. The only criterion is that whenever it becomes necessary. In addition to that, under the case of Ampatuan versus Puno, the calling out of the armed forces to prevent or suppress lawless violence is a power that the Constitution directly vested in the President. The President does not need a congressional authority to exercise say. If there is a need to pacify people's fears and stabilize the situation, the President has to take preventive action. In the case of Olager versus Military Commission No. 34 discusses that Military tribunals are simple instrumentalities of the executive power provided by the legislature for the commander-in-chief to aid him in enforcing discipline in the armed forces. Is there anything else you might want to add? Of course! It is important to note that the Philippine National Police is not part of the armed forces because it is civilian in character. Under Republic Act 6975, it states that a member of the Philippine National Police is under the actual jurisdiction of the civilian courts. So what about the suspension of the privilege of writ of habeas corpus? Our partner Noreen will discuss it. Noreen, take, take it, away. it away! Thank you friends! By the way, I'm Noreen and I'm going to discuss to you the second military power of the President. The second military power of the President is the power to suspend the privilege of the writ of obeyes corpus. However, it can only be done for the following grounds. Invasion or rebellion and when the public safety requires it. Paragraph 4, Section 18, Article 7 enumerate the effects of the suspension of the privilege of the writ of obeyes corpus. First, it suspends the remedy against illegal arrest and detention. Second, the proclamation, however, does not affect the right to post bail. Third, it applies only to persons facing charges or rebellion or offenses inherent in or directly connected with the invasion. Fourth, persons arrested must be charged within three days. If not, they must be released. And last, proclamation of the suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus does not supersede civilian authority. military power of the president is the power to declare martial law. The grounds for declaration of martial law are invasion, or rebellion, and when public safety requires it. 
Paragraph 4, Section 18 of Article 7 of the 1987 Constitution states that, despite the declaration of martial law, the following cannot be done. First, suspend the operation of the Constitution. Second, supplant the functioning of the civil courts and legislative assemblies. Third, confer jurisdiction over civilians upon military courts and agency where civil courts are able to function. In the case of Olaguer v. Military Commission No. 34, it discusses the open court doctrine, which means that the civilians cannot be tried in the military courts if the civil courts are open and functioning. And lastly, it automatically suspends the writ of privilege of habeas corpus. Constitutional limitations on the suspension of privilege of writ of habeas corpus and declaration of martial law are not more than 60 days, following which it shall be lifted unless extended by Congress. In the case of Lagman v. Medjaldea, the Congress has the prerogative to extend the martial law and the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus, as the Constitution does not limit the period for which it can extend the same. Note that the Congress, if not in session within 24 hours, following such proclamation or suspension, convenes in accordance with its rules and regulations without any need of call. The duty of the President to report to Congress is within 48 hours, personally or in writing. The authority of the Congress to revoke or extend the effectivity of proclamation is by majority vote of all the members voting jointly. Note that in the case of Lagman v. Pimentel, the Constitution does not specify the number of times the Congress is allowed to approve an extension of martial law or the suspension of the privilege of writ of habeas corpus. According to the case of Padilla v. Congress, nor is the Congress constitutionally mandated to convene in joint session for any other purpose except to vote jointly to revoke the President's declaration or suspension. The Supreme Court explained in the case of Lagman v. Medialdea that the only limitations to the exercise of congressional authority to extend such proclamation or suspension are the following. First, the extension should be upon the President's initiative. Second, it should be grounded on the persistence of the invasion or rebellion and the demands of public safety. And lastly, it is subject to the court's review of the sufficiency of the factual basis of the petition of any citizen. About the authority of the Supreme Court. That's a very good question, Lawrence. As to the authority of the Supreme Court, Paragraph 3, Section 18, Article 7 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution states that to inquire into sufficiency of the factual basis for such action at the instance of any citizen. It's also important to note that decision must be promulgated 30 days from its filing. In the case of Fortune v. Macapagal Arroyo, the constitutional validity of the President's proclamation of martial law or suspension of the privilege of writ of habeas corpus is first a political question in the hands of the Congress before it becomes justiciable on the hands of the court. Although the Constitution reserves the Supreme Court the power to review the sufficiency of such proclamation or suspension, the Supreme Court must allow Congress to exercise its own review powers, which is automatic rather than initiated. Only when Congress defaults should the Supreme Court step in as its final rampart. But how about the ways to lift the proclamation of martial law? Of course, there are several ways to lift the proclamation of martial law or the suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus. First, it's by lifting by the President himself. Second, by operation of law after 60 days. 
third, the revocation by the Congress, and lastly, the nullification by the Supreme Court. In the case, in the case of Integrated Mara of the Philippines versus Amora, the factual necessity of calling out the armed forces of the Philippines is a discretionary power solely vested in the President of the Philippines. Thus, generally, the Supreme Court cannot overrule the President's wisdom or substitute its own unless the President's decision is totally bereft of factual basis. However, in the case of San Lucas versus Executive Secretary, Although the court may look upon the sufficiency of the factual basis of this power, this is no longer feasible when the proclamation has already been lifted. And those are the military powers of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Under Section 18, Article 7 of the 1987 Constitution. We hope that you learned something.